Hi folks, I'm Michael from Virtual Shape Research and in this video I will talk about surface quality in general and Class A surfaces trying to answer the following common questions. What does the term Class A mean, respectively what are Class A surfaces? Why or when do I need them? And if I need them, how can I create Class A? Well, the term Class A originally comes from the automotive area but has spread from there as a synonym for high quality surfaces. It stands for the visible freeform surfaces of an object during the product design. In case of a car, this would be all surfaces defining the outer shape, but also the interior space like steering wheel and dashboard, which is visible for the driver and the passengers. As these surfaces can be constantly seen, their quality is the main reason for buying or not buying a product. Other areas, for example the side of the door, which can only be seen when opening or closing it, or the trunk, are so-called Class B surfaces. They don't have to fulfill the high quality criteria of Class R surfaces, which is usually curvature continuity. Ok, so what is curvature continuity, or continuity in general, and why is it important? Let's load this Rhino tutorial model called Camera and have a closer look at it. I'm switching to shaded mode and the model looks good in general. Checking all surfaces with the VSR global matching analysis, you can see that the whole surface model of the camera is perfectly matched position continuous, which is also called G0 continuous. When activating the display of all found transitions, they are completely displayed in white, indicating that there is no problem, and the first column shows zero for all of them. That means the model is watertight, there are no gaps, so exactly what you would expect from a camera. But when checking the transitions for tangency, also known as G1, you can see that there are several transitions which have bends even bigger than one degree. For example, transition 70 has a discontinuity of nearly 2.2. But why is this relevant? Well, the default Rhino material and the display mode shaded don't show too much reflection. Let's change that by assigning a highly reflective material like chrome for example. I now also have to change to a display mode which shows this reflection attribute of the material. Choosing an environment with more structure and then zooming into the area with the surface transition with the tangency error, you can see that the reflection is not continuous, leaving an impression of a dent here, something you would clearly want to avoid. Instead of working with reflective materials and environments all the time, it is easier to analyze such areas with a specialized function. You can either use the Rhino Zebra function or the VSR light lines for that. Using the VSR light lines, you can see that their display is not very smooth. This is because they are based on the Rhino mesh settings, which are not too good in this file. So let's enter some better values for that. And we get nice smooth light lines. One nice feature is that you can control the light lines by moving a handle, you don't have to rotate the geometry like for the Rhino Zebra function. You can clearly see now the transition problems in this area. To be able to modify the surfaces here, I first have to explode the model. Having done that, I can use a matching function to fix this transition. I'm selecting one edge and in VSR surface matching the other edge is found automatically in this case. I'm requesting a tangential matching here and if I hit apply you can see that the light lines are connected now. The light lines still have bends though but I can fix this by creating a curvature continuous matching. Going back to the real-time renderer mode, you actually can't see any longer that you have a surface transition here, and this is exactly what you want. 
Zooming out, you see that we've ripped apart the other surface transitions with that. In the current version of ESR shape modeling, you would use the multi-matching function, called surface align, to avoid that. But there's also a nice option in the surface matching function itself, called minimize changes. It tries to keep the control points in their current positions, while still doing the matching. This way, the influence on other surface transitions is minimized also in the local 1 by 1 surface matching. This can be useful, because sometimes you want to use surface matching instead of surface align, because it provides you more options and therefore gives you more control over the matching. But there's more to class A than just curvature continuity. In the next episode I will explain in more detail what is needed for that. You can download a 3 week test version of ESR shape modeling in the download section of our homepage. Thank you for watching.